Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's Mark at GeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I got a brand new coffee this morning. Man, is this, this has got a kick to it, really. That is really, really good. Uh, this is from Whole Foods, their 365 brand. This is a pleasant morning buzz. And as you can see right here, it is like one step away from being a very dark coffee. But it is bold, it is rich, it is flavorful. And I think they named it correctly when they, when they called it Pleasant Morning Buzz. This really will get you going in the morning. Yeah, I like this a lot. Just happened to be going through Whole Foods the other morning. And I saw this and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. It comes in ground and also whole bean, but I just thought I'd try the uh, ground coffee for convenience purposes. But yeah, very, very good. I like this. 365 brand, pleasant morning buzz. Really, um, really a, a, a darker coffee, but very rich, bold, flavorful. I like it a lot. And I've got just the everyday coffee mug this morning. You've seen me use this before. This is dishware that uh, my folks had for years and years and years. A lot of you probably have these kinds of uh, coffee mugs out there with this kind of pattern. Uh, I think I've seen these in blue and also cranberry, but this one's green. And yeah, uh, where's like iron? This thing's got to be, gosh, 40, 50, 60 years old, something like that. So yeah, making use of it just like I make use of uh, the vintage razors and dad's vintage razor as well. So hey, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. We got some great, great subjects to talk about. Okay, so let's get right to it right now. And uh, let's kick it off with a morning shaving tip. Okay, so this shaving tip comes from Dr. Felton D. Bartlett Jr. And he writes, Hi Mark, I've noticed that you and others who bowl lather place the soap directly in the bowl and lather with a wet brush. I discovered that all I need to do is load my brush, add a bit of water to my bowl, and then whip up a thick, creamy lather. If I use a cream, I just dip the tips of my brush in the container and whip up a nice lather. Have you tried that technique? I can't see any advantage of placing the soap and or cream into the bowl to do a bowl lather. When I load my brush like I'm going to do a face lather, I get enough lather to do four or more passes. In fact, with Phoenix shaving soaps, I don't load the brush for more than five or six swirls in the container. The lather explodes in the bowl. Your thoughts? Boom, lather, Bart. Uh, yes, Bart, that's a great shaving tip. And um, you know what? You can do it either way you want to. I love the face lather, but lately, because of the cold weather and uh, because of the uh, travel scuttle I, hear, I have here that will give me a nice warm lather, I've been doing that. And I've been scraping the soap out and putting it into the travel scuttle and whipping up a lather there. And a couple of reasons. Again, the cold weather, I want a warm lather, and this really is... Uh, very functional in giving me a really nice warm lather. The other reason also is the uh, whole discussion we had regarding uh, preserving soaps and keeping them from going bad, that sort of thing. So uh, lately I haven't been introducing water into the container, just been scraping it out. You can see I've used CAD this morning and I just scraped out some and I put it in a shaving bowl and whipped up a lather that way. And this has given me an opportunity to use some of my other shaving bowls. And I'm really enjoying that too, uh, especially uh, the shaving bowls like uh, this marble one here that also retains some heat. The uh, stainless steel shaving bowls from uh, Vikings Blade. These also, you know, get warm and retain a lot of heat. I really like that a lot. And of course, I have uh, two different sizes. I have the Grand Chairman Bowl here. I have the regular chairman bowl and both work very, very well. And yes, I have done the lathering the other way just by putting a little shaving cream on the brush and then doing a face lather like that. And I am guilty of over swirling uh, in, in the Phoenix shaving containers. 
when I'm loading my brush. I do overload and I probably also over scrape uh, because yes, it makes a lot of lather. So um, that's a great tip. Um, and I, I think that, um, you know, it's all in how you want to do the shave. But yeah, I might give that a try. However, I think because of uh, the whole discussion about uh, water in the container and having to keep the lid off and letting it dry and that sort of thing, lately, because of the cold weather, I've been scraping the soap out and I've been uh, putting it into uh, my travel scuttle and whipping up a ladder that way. And it's worked very, very well. Now, uh, for your tip, Bart, I'm going to be sending you this original George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and I will get this in the mail to you ASAP. So thanks very much for that tip. And remember, send me your tips and you too could get an original George sketch just for sending the tip in. I've got a lot of great tips in. Uh, from in, I've got a lot of great tips in the email uh, since announcing this, and uh, I will get to all of them. I'm probably going to try to do one a week, so please be patient if you don't see your tip come up. So uh, again, I may or may not use it, but chances are I'm going to use it because the tips have been absolutely great. Now, before we move on, let me give you a uh, shaving tip. Uh, because we talked about bowl lathering and that sort of thing, let me talk about the travel scuttle here. I've been using this so very often that over time, I've gotten a little bit of soap scum build up on the inside and also on the outside here. And uh, I've discovered that a soft toothbrush and a few drops of Dr. Bronner's will clean that right off. So if you happen to have uh, a travel scuttle from Phoenix Shaving, and it's got this really nice Prussian blue color, if you happen to have this uh, and you happen to see some Soap scum building up on the inside or building up around the edges. And <laughs> there goes my stopper. One minute, let me get my stopper. <laughs> okay, I got it. I'll just settle over there. All right. So if you ever have soap building up uh, around the, uh, in the inside, around the edges, that sort of thing, uh, again, just a couple of drops of Dr. Browner's and a soft toothbrush will take that right off in some hot water and uh, take it right off and you know restore it to its really original beauty. It really was, just, it's just really terrific. Very lightweight, very high impact and uh, putting some hot water in there. You can put hot, hot, hot water in there and boy, does it make a nice warm lather. So I just wanted to mention that if you have one of these or you're planning on getting one of these, a little bit of Dr. Bronner's really cleans up some excess soap scum that might, be a bit, that might build up over time. All right. So thanks very much, Bart. Thank you again, all the viewers for sending in your tips. I'll get to them all. Oh, hey, almost forgot. Time for a refill. Okay. This morning's refill comment comes from Bart Bartlett. Hey, Bart, you're two for two. My gosh, you're knocking it out of the park. And he's commenting on uh, our discussion of mild razors, aggressive razors, avoiding irritation, that sort of thing. It's been kind of an ongoing topic of discussion. And he writes, good morning, Mark. This was one of your best Monday morning mailbags. Lots of great tips. When it comes to mild razors, I would recommend the Henson Mild Safety Razor. While it may not be the most efficient safety razor, it is an excellent choice for anyone wanting to give wet shaving a try. The newcomer won't get discouraged since there's almost no chance of nicks or irritation. I don't envy you those cold temps. 30 degrees in North Georgia is frigid enough for me. Stay warm. A few extra cups of hot coffee will definitely help. Hey, thanks very much for that, Bart. Uh, I agree with you. The Henson Mild Razor is very, very nice and very, very good for beginners. Now, the other thing that is nice about this T-shaped razor head is that 30 degree angle is built right in, right there. So uh, it'll keep you on that 30 degree angle throughout your shave. It is very, very effective. And I find it to be a little more efficient than most, but then again, that's just me, your mileage may vary. But I found it to be a very, very nice, mild and efficient razor. It is made out of um, aluminum, aircraft grade aluminum, I believe, and it's CNC machined, so it's very, very precise. It is a three-piece razor, uh, just to show you. 
uh, right there. And it is a slot, a slot and groove kind of uh, configuration in assembling the head. And it doesn't come through to the base plate either. You can see that, which is kind of neat. And it has some sort of thrust bearing or bushing right here to uh, keep you from over tightening the handle on that base plate. Really a terrific razor, perfect alignment and balance of the razor blade. And again, that angle and shape of the razor head keeps you on that 30 degree angle. So yeah, I think it's a very, very good suggestion. It is a very, very good razor for beginners. Wanting to get into the uh, wet shaving uh, routine, uh, traditional wet shaving routine. Also, if you're coming from a cartridge razor, the uh, aluminum uh, weight, the lightweight quality of it uh, is is good for making that transition. You just have to remember not to press down with a safety razor. With a cartridge razor, you're pressing down with a safety razor. All you need is a light touch. And this one also, uh, just a light touch. Even though there's not a lot of weight there, still the razor head does all the work. So yeah, a very, very good suggestion. Thanks very much for that, Bart. Okay, it's a bottomless cup, so here's refill number two. Okay, so this comment comes from viewer Phil Watton. And again, it's the discussion of mild, aggressive razors, what's best to avoid irritation, that sort of thing. And Phil writes, great video, Mark. I struggled with irritation for a long time and bought a mild razor, DE89, and a mild blade, Derby, and still got bad irritation, especially on my neck. I have recently found using a Mule R41 and Permasharp blades is the way to go. No cuts or nicks. The key is good pre and post shave routine and to use no pressure at all. If you suffer from irritation, give this a go. Please note, I would not suggest this for beginners. Well, thanks very much for that, Phil. And I agree, I wouldn't jump right into, if you're a beginner, I would not jump into a really, really aggressive razor. Now, the R41 is very aggressive. I reviewed the R102, which is an R41, but with a different handle. It's uh, got a pearl white fan handle instead of a chromed handle but it has the same razor head as the R41. And I found this to be very, very aggressive. I cannot use this razor two days in a row. However, like yourself and many other wet shavers, you can, this, this is going to just sing for you. This will be perfect for you. And yeah, the Permasharp blades I have used as well. I've got to review these. I don't have, I don't, can't remember if I've used these on camera, but I do have to review these down the road. Uh, they are a good sharp blade, as I recall. Haven't used them in a while because of the uh, other blades I've been talking about and using. But yeah, it's a your mileage may vary kind of situation. If you're a beginner, start mild. Absolutely, I would suggest that. Uh, again, going back to uh, something like the Henson razor. Uh, got a couple of mild razors I can share with you also, as long as we're discussing this. Uh, Godfather Stonehenge from Vikings Blade. Boy, this is a beautifully mild razor. I love this razor. I love the weight and the heft of it. It's got a stainless steel handle, uh, stainless steel cap. It has a zinc alloy plated uh, base plate, but it is very well machined and manufactured or however they produce it. And everything is perfectly aligned when you drop a blade in. Uh, alignment and balance are spot on and it gives a wonderfully wonderfully efficient close shave this is probably one of the few razors i will use a feather blade in uh, the feather blade really ups the efficiency and i get a beautiful shave so that's uh, kind of been my approach uh, and that's not to say that uh, using something that's really aggressive with a really sharp razor is a bad approach if it works for you wow great and i'm glad uh, phil that that does work for you Another razor that I have that has just been wonderful has been the, uh, the Metaphor razor from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, this is completely stainless steel. It is a three-piece razor. Actually, it's a four-piece razor. It comes apart like this. Let me just show you real quickly. I've, I've reviewed this and shaved with this. It's beautiful. I shaved with it this morning, uh, and it's a three-piece razor like that. Okay, a very, very slim profile razor head. And uh, 
It's also part of their flare tip series, so this comes off here. So you can use it as a short-handled razor, or you can put a different colored a tip on there and uh, check out my reviews of, uh, of this and you'll see a different color tip on it. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a terrific razor. Uh, again, I prefer uh, mild razors that are highly efficient and this I'll probably try a feather razor in as well because of its mild quality. But again, uh, it's, you know, your mileage may vary um, regarding uh razors and blades and that sort of thing. Uh, just kind of a sneak peek as long as we're talking about aggressive razors, mild razors, sharp blades, mild blades. I'll be reviewing this razor blade this week, Rapira. Uh, shave with this again this morning, shave number two with one of the blades in the, the metaphor. Uh, wow, this is a terrific blade. I got a really nice close shave with these blades. I was very, very surprised. So um, check out that review that's running this week, just so you know. Uh, just, boy, there's so many great things out there. And again, when you get into the traditional wet shave, you're probably going to have to try some variables here and there to try to figure out what's best for you. With me, it was the Vikings Blade Chieftain. Right off the bat, I put in, um, what did I put in? Um, uh, a Persona Blade worked really well for me. Then the Vikings Blade introduced their Mild Razor Blade, which was which has been absolutely great. So, yeah, I guess I guess I just kind of uh, really just took to it, and I didn't struggle with it too much in the beginning. It did take me a couple months for my skin to adapt, as I've always mentioned, but uh, really, it's just been a great process, and I think that if, uh, if you're thinking about trying the traditional wet shave, go for it. As the viewers have suggested, go mild at first, get a good mild razor blade, get a good mild razor, as I suggested some of these here, and then work from there and kind of find where your level's at. That's, that's, really, what, that's really what I did, and it worked for me. But uh, thank you very much for that, Phil. I really do appreciate the comments, and um, I'm sure it helped a lot of viewers, especially those of you out there who are, trying, who are thinking about trying the traditional wet shave. Really, the best time to do the traditional wet shave is right now. There are so many great products out there, from shaving soaps to razors to blades to brushes, Shaving bowls, scuttles, it's amazing. You'll find something that fits your skin type and your wallet, your budget. All right, thanks again, Phil. I really do appreciate it. Okay, this next question. Well, I'll tell you what, a little inside baseball here. In between some of these questions, I sometimes get up and get a refill. Uh, my coffee pot's over there and get a refill. You might even see the, the level in the, in the mug change a little bit from question to question. But I do get up and put some fresh coffee in there because I am enjoying a cup of coffee while I do this. And I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me as well. And I got to tell you, the aroma from this coffee uh, has been wonderful. Uh, you know, and the bag is not here. It's over there because I just made another pot. It's that good, really. Okay, now we'll get to this question here. This is from Pupnern. And uh, he wrote in last week's Monday morning mailbag the following comment. Dude. 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah, 40 minutes. Yes, I think he's referring to the length that these Monday morning mailbags run. And I think last week was probably 40 minutes. When I first started these, I thought maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then viewers asked me to make them a little longer. So I think it may have run away from me a little bit in 40 minutes might be a little too long. I'll try to keep them at about 25 to 30 minutes. I think that would be a, a good run time. However, one viewer, and I can't remember who, suggested that I put links to the various questions in the description below. So all you got to do is go to the description below and look at, the, look at the little heading that says topics. And there are links there to the different timestamps. Just click on one of those timestamp links and it'll take you right to that question. So if you don't have time to watch it in one sitting, but you do see a topic of interest, maybe I'm talking about a Gillette Nasset blade, maybe I'm talking about the Vikings blade Stonehenge, maybe I'm talking about uh, bowl lathering, face lathering, whatever, that description, that topic will be right there next to that timestamp to kind of give you an idea of what the subject is. Just click on it and you'll go right to that subject. I thought that was a really helpful suggestion and I try to put that 
uh, in every Monday morning mailbag. I've missed a couple of times in the past in just uploading this and running around, that sort of thing. But I am doing it consistently now because it is such a helpful feature. So yeah, try to condense it a little more, but be aware of those really um, those nice timestamps there that, that will take you right to those questions and topics. Uh, but really, I hope you hang around for the entire episode because I really enjoy doing these. And, uh, you know, I learn a lot from the viewers as well. So, uh, Pup Nern, thanks very much for that topic. And let me know, uh, folks, uh, 40 minutes too long, 20 minutes too short. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, Pup Nern. Okay, so this next comment comes from viewer James Allen. And he was commenting in one of the videos where I was discussing the Gillette Fat Boy and the Gillette Slim. And he writes, it's got to be the slim for me. Dare I say the fat boy is a bit heavy for my liking. It cramps my hand on my against the grain pass. It makes me not want to use it, which sucks because those razors aren't exactly cheap. I'm having a bit of learning curve with it. Granted, I've only used it three times um, because I thought the heavier razor would be better and give me better performance. It's not a bad razor at all. I could just be holding it wrong. Can you recommend a way to make a shave with a fat boy a little more enjoyable? Well, I've got my fat boy here and uh, I think I commented back to you, but I'll share here with the viewers that uh, I've always learned that when doing it against a grain pass, I hold the razor as I hold a pencil uh, or a pen. And that's how I hold it. I don't hold it like this. Uh, I hold it like this, and I just, again, I just use a light touch, and I let the razor do all the work. Now, um, what you said about having a heavy razor kind of goes opposite to what a previous comment was in Monday Morning Mailbag, where one viewer was saying that heavier razors could be uh, to an advantage to folks who have uh, these different tremors, uh, and it keeps their hand from shaking. The weight actually stabilizes uh, their hand, their arm, their wrist, that sort of thing. But again, it's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Um, the fat boy, you know, might be uh, a little too uh, large in diameter uh, and the slim might might be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, they're both great razors to have. Don't, don't, don't give up on it. I would just say put it aside and then use your slim and then maybe come back to the fat boy and see how that works out. But that's really the only tip I have right now off the top of my head for holding this is to uh, use, hold it like a pencil for an against the grain pass, just like this. And a light, a light touch is all you need. Now, when I shave with this, I usually support the bottom of the handle with my pinky like this, like just like that. And again, a light touch. Uh, and that's all I need. Uh, and these razors have been absolutely great. Now, <clears throat> your question allows me to preview something that I just got into my shaving den. Uh, viewer Jerry Plesha commented, sent me a message, uh, uh, told me about a gentleman who replates razors. This gentleman's name is Chris Evett. And uh, I have that Gillette Slim, the J3 from 1964. If you haven't seen my review of it, it's uh, the, the model year that Sean Connery used in the movie Goldfinger. So I did a review on that and kind of related it to the Goldfinger movie. And it was in pretty good shape, but the mechanism, uh, the bottom mechanism was sticking and it was gunked up. I tried cleaning it out. So when Jerry recommended his gentleman to replate I contacted him, and my gosh, was he informative. He absolutely impressed me with his knowledge and his background. He is a chemist, and he works in the pharmaceutical industry, and this is a sideline for him. But my gosh, he gives you beautiful concierge service. He took photos along the way and showed me step-by-step step of how my razor was progressing. Let me show you right here. Here it is right here. Here it is. Look at that. It looks brand spanking new. It looks showroom floor new. It is absolutely beautiful. It looks new and it operates new. I have not had a chance to shave with it yet. I'm going to do a follow-up video on that. And uh, I'm going to get a little more in-depth into this in a future video here. Hopefully shoot that this week. Uh, but boy, this is 
absolutely gorgeous. He did a deep clean with some sort of sonic cleaner, I guess, and did a beautiful plating job. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it looks it looks exactly like, I would think, exactly like uh, it would look the day it came out of its original packaging. It looks absolutely beautiful. And everything clicks through very, very precisely like this. And, and watch, I'll show you. Turn it up to about, I'll turn it up to about seven there. And then here's my quarter turn. Very, very smooth. Very, very smooth. There's, there's, there's nothing gunking it up anymore. And uh, it's ju it just looks brand new. It was worth every penny. And the charge was $55 to replate this. It was worth every single penny. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I can hardly wait to shave with it because it is, it's just, it's just beautiful. I just, I just cannot get over how good this looks. Brand new. Showroom floor new. It really is. And uh, mechanically, it's very, very sound. And he also gave me some background on the mechanics on this. And uh, the ins and outs of it. And uh, really, really very, very knowledgeable when it comes to this particular safety razor and the plating process and how it was done and how he was going to do it. And I think he put on a more robust, uh, hardier coat of, uh, of nickel plating than uh, was originally given. Uh, and this razor is, what, 57 years old? Uh, I'm going to have, this is going to be in great shape for the next, you know, 60, 70 years. Really just amazing. So I just wanted to share that with you. So Thanks very much for your comment, James. It enabled me to give you a, a tip that I hope helps and also to share with the viewers uh, Chris Evitt's service in um, replating these great vintage razors. So as I say, if you come across one of these razors, snap it up, use it. They're usually in pretty good shape. And if you want to have something replated, then there are services like Chris's out there, and he does a wonderful job. I highly recommend him, and it is well worth the money. Look at that. That just, I mean, the light just, look at that. The light just dances off of that. Look at that. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's brand new. Look, look, it just, I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. So thanks again, James. I really do appreciate it. Okay, in keeping with our discussion on razors, viewer Zane Riddling wrote, the real advantage to the 34C is that it allows you to shave quicker and get on with your day without mistakes, cuts, or pain. Few people who work for a living have endless time in the bathroom for one part of your grooming and or showering routine. Well, I understand that, Zane. And yeah, the traditional wet shave does take a little more time, but you're correct. The 34C is a terrific razor. It's very mild, it's very efficient, and yes, it does minimize cuts, nit, nicks, irritation, and a lot of wet shavers love this razor. Uh, in case you are not familiar, it's a two-piece razor, and uh, blade uh, alignment and balance is spot on. It has some nice heft to it, and uh, it is very, very maneuverable. And it's just a terrific razor, it really is. Very well chromed. Uh, like this razor a lot. Uh, it's one of those razors where, in my opinion, you have to really be spot on on that 30 degree angle to get the most efficiency from it. But again, that's part of its charm. And yes, it does give you a nice, mild, efficient shave. And it does minimize those nicks and cuts. Absolutely no doubt about it. However, as I, as I tell everyone, if you're going to start the traditional wet shave and do it properly, and do all the proper prep, and you have to be someplace in the morning, wake up 30 minutes earlier. Wake up 30 minutes earlier, get your day going. Enjoy that time to do the traditional wet shave. Now, given our schedules and that sort of thing, I know of a lot of wet shavers who will skip their morning shave, and they'll shave in the evening before they turn, before they turn in. And there's always been that discussion too, which is better, the morning shave or the evening shave? A lot of wet shavers out there like the evening shave because... They have the time to do it right before they turn in, uh, and they can run out the door in the morning and still have that clean, shaved feeling. Um, 
because, well, you know, maybe a little, maybe their their beard isn't as demanding, maybe a little more on the fair skin side, whatever the reason is. But a lot of gentlemen out there will shave in the evenings and then they're ready to go in the morning. Others will wake up a little earlier and, uh, you know, spend the time and do the morning shave. I had a morning shave this morning and it was just absolutely wonderful. I just love taking the time to do it. And if it means waking up 30 minutes earlier, well then, you know, so be it. I mean, you know, get on with your day. Get out and get on with your day. So, you know, get up, wake up, get out, have that shower, have that morning shave. It's really the best part of the day. As, as the saying goes, if your shave isn't the best part of your day, you're doing it wrong. And the traditional wet shave is the way to go. And yeah, there are, there are times when you can kind of cut corners with your morning routine. And uh, the 34C is, is one way to do it because yes, I agree. It minimizes nicks and cuts and allows you to maybe speed up the process in shaving a little bit. But um, I prefer just to take my time to enjoy my shave. It's just me and that shave. And I, I wake up a little earlier in the morning and uh, spend that time on me and then get on with my day. But you know what? Your mileage may vary. It depends on how you want to start your day or end your day. Entirely up to you. Make it your shave. And I understand your point, Zane. Thanks very much for the comment. I really appreciate it. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a hail the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the executive shaving company, use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comics from George, other cartoons, other videos like this. I'm on Facebook, check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements for some great shaving gear. Check out Global Shave Clubs International for some great shaving gear. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash marks where you'll find all the products I review in this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.